Hey, what's going on? You're hanging out with The Rock Man, and I am so happy to have here in the building the tea party. What's going on, guys? Bonjour. <laughs> Salut, mon ami. I'm really, really excited about the new album. Uh, I've been a fan for a long time, and I know you and I spoke recently about this. You guys gave my band one of our first opening slots at the Spectrum, um, Slaves on Dope, and then we were on the road in Calgary, and we needed a gig, and we were stuck. We had no, mon no money. We were stuck at my guitar player's mom's house. And we rolled up to the Republic, and we went to Victor and said, listen, I know it says Tea Party plus guests. What do you think? He goes, I'll have to check it through the band. He called us the next day, band came in, no problem. And I remember we made more money in merch yeah. than we had ever made, which yeah, got we us... We bought all your shirts, we remember. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I, we wore your shirts for like four I years honest, after that. I honestly <laughs> still have a Slaves on Dope shirt at home. You do? I really do. Well, the reason why I'm saying that is because... And our percentages were... Well, I don't know. I don't, <laughs> know. Know if we price, I don't think we price match, but, but the, the reason I'm saying that is because you guys are always very gracious, and you're always really, really generous with openers. I'll always remember that, because you always brought great bands with you, because you guys weren't afraid of being up staged I think there's room for everybody to shine on stage Absolutely. everyone has their own thing right and our thing is to do our thing and a young band that we often take out now out of Ontario called the standstills it's just okay. a duo it's a, a girlfriend boyfriend thing and it's it, they are what they are and they do what they do really really well and we're not afraid of sharing the love with anything as long as it's real and organic and passionate right if the opening act does pull out a violin bow it's like whoa hold yeah. on a second there. <laughs> did you just slip cashmere in the middle of that song because we were gonna do that you guys had a little bit of a break where you didn't talk to each other and um and i've been through so that nice myself. how nice is it to come back to it this it, it, you got to come back at this point with a different outlook and a, and, a, and a newfound love for it right um to tell you the truth i mean once we got over um our our differences which really didn't take that long no. Um, but I could say, and I think the two boys would agree with me, is that um, our friendship probably now is stronger than it's ever been, you know? And a lot of love, you know, a lot of respect, and um, and in, in the band is re like the music that we're making, both on stage and on the records, you know, it's just reflecting that, so. Uh, the Australia thing. I mean, I know you're, you're a resident of Australia mm -hmm. now, you live there. How cool is it for you guys to go over to Australia? And uh, I know you've been there many times, but to go there now that he's got a home base and see the reaction from the fans. Well, uh, it's cool on many levels, but to be paid to go on vacation is pretty nice. <laughs> exactly, <country>. right? <laughs> it's an amazing country. And just, yeah, people are so passionate about music there. And just the national radio station played our first single straight out of the gate. So we had a following instantaneously over there and just we've built it ever since on the quality of our live shows. Being a Canadian band, you didn't really ever have that big American machine. And I don't want to talk, you know, that all American bands get that big push. No, no. But more often than not, they end up in Australia and only to fall flat on their face because they right. got that big machine behind them. They get all hyped up and then it fizzles live. Whereas we just kind of came in, three young guys out of Canada, and did residency tours from Melbourne to Sydney and so on and just blew people's minds and it exponentially grew each and every time. One, one right? time we had made it though, uh, third tour we're over there and there's a big poster from the country that brought you the tea party, yeah. Junk House. <laughs> oh, really? We were a point of reference for other record yeah, labels. Like, awesome. can we do that tea party thing? Let's just mimic it and just make <laughs> the bottom Because you guys always went after, you know, uh, so many bands um, from that period of the 90s were like, US, 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 and you guys were like, no, international. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. Think about it. You know, the middle part of America, mm -hmm. do you really think the tea party's music's gonna go down well? Well, much like the you know, 20s jazz musicians, you know, from America, a lot of those guys had to go to France mm -hmm. to get popular. Absolutely. And then you have a career for the rest of your life there because people yeah. don't care about the looks and the day-to-day yeah. -day fashion. It's about the quality of the music, and that's what we're about. So, you know, substance. Budweiser or Belgian beer? Right. You guys Budweiser are, your guys are or Belgian, Belgian beer. beer. I found it interesting when you told me how you came up with the title for uh, The Ocean at the End. <laughs> Why don't you share that story with us? Um, well, yes, okay. Well, Perth um, is basically, you know, uh, as far as the Western world is concerned, right? It's uh, you can't go any further. Right. Like, that is it. You know, and the Indian Ocean being there, and um, and it was a point to, like I knew I was going back to Perth. I was leaving um, the east coast of Australia and going back to Perth and to be with my my little boy and all that. It just it just made sense, you know, the ocean at the end. But also like the ocean at the end is, um, I believe, anyways, it's a metaphor for a new beginning. You right. know what I mean? Because we're okay. There it is. Right. But now we're setting sail in that ocean, Absolutely. so it's like, you know, I, I, would, I truly believe that with the Tea Party, the best is yet to come. Uh, you know what, and after listening to the album, I have to agree too. And it's, it's great to see um, bands from your generation coming back so strong with such great releases. You know, it, it really is, um, it really has, has a lot to, to say about the music that was coming out in the 90s, because I really believe the 90s was an amazing decade for music. Yeah, and the nice part about it, I think for us, is 
we're not trying to to create something new. We're we're just doing what we do. You guys you know have always I mean? been like that. You guys yeah. just do what you do, and yeah. you don't pay attention to any of the comparisons. But you guys are amazing. You know, Thank you guys you. were always really, really a solid Really? Band. What else do you think? <laughs> I want to talk about the album cover really, really quickly. Um, uh, Sirk and Halo, listen. What, I mean, that thing is like doing acid. <laughs> so, well, I mean, we're inspired, obviously, by you know, a little point reference. Yeah. <laughs> Over this here, we've got a chart. Love. <laughs> right, right. This is Dark Side of the Moon. This is Zappin' One. Right. Now, we're actually hidden in here, too, the band members. A lot okay. of people don't know that, but and I won't point it out. Exactly. And there's like a there's, there's like a Monty Python thing going on here. What's well, I mean, it's, it's a like, collage. Yeah. You wanted to do something that you could put the album on for 60 minutes. Yeah. And then and it, look at it. And then look at this for 60 minutes. Dripping balls. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's it. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> and being a guy being a guy who doesn't drink or do drugs anymore, I don't need to when I look at this. Yeah. Well, we actually have this behind us on stage now. And okay. It's 27 feet high. Oh, geez. So if we so get, now <laughs> you can see everything that's hidden. But so that's when you look at this, you you there's meaning behind everything in there to you. Uh, almost. Yeah. Like the like yeah. the swimming mic. You know, I mean, this deals with some of Jeff's esoteric things, some of okay. this uh, uh, Indian ink work here. And uh, and then yeah. there's a Rubik's yeah. Cube. Well, you know, we were children of the 80s as well, I guess. So. <laughs> Still haven't figured that one out. <laughs> well, look, guys, I want to thank you so much for taking the time and coming down to show them. Uh, we've loved you from day one, you know that. Right. And, yeah. uh, and it's great to see you guys in Montreal. And please keep in touch with us and keep coming back. And I, I believe... This is That's a, our this favorite is, city to play in the world. Well, and, we talk and, about Montreal in Australia. Well, it's it's, it's, it's like a second home for you yeah. guys, yeah. and uh, and I love that analogy of setting sail because yeah. I think you guys have to set sail and keep doing it. It's important. We need bands like you around. So. We will do it. Awesome. Thanks, man. Tea party. Sure. Yeah, show them. Don't leave brother hanging. Don't leave brother hanging. Sorry. <laughs>